Hola mi gente, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and this is We Are Investing, a channel that's dedicated in investing and personal finance. On today's video, we are going to dive deep into rolling options. I am going to show you a trade that we personally did. This is a trade that I personally hold and a trade that I have had to roll options on multiple times. Going through this example is going to give you a lot of insight on what rolling options are, how to do it, and what you can expect when rolling options. It's also going to show you the power of rolling options and the flexibility it gives you as an options trader. With that being said, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button to get more content regarding the stock market and to help Help grow this channel. So sit back and relax and let's do it. Step number one, what is rolling an option? Well, you can roll call options, put options, whether you're long call options or long put options, or if you're short call options or short put options, you can roll them. You can roll call options that you just bought, put options that you just bought. You can roll covered calls, poor man's covered calls. You can roll cash occurred puts, you can roll credit spreads, debit spreads, you can roll pretty much any option that you buy or write. Rolling options is just a fancy term for closing the position that you opened up in the first place and then opening up another position at a different expiration date. Typically, it's the next expiration date at the same strike price. But you can get fancy, you can roll options out and pick expiration dates that are a little bit further out, even different strike prices but essentially it's just closing an options position and then opening up another one that's relatively the same trade. By doing this, you can keep an options trade alive. You can also extend that expiration so that it ends up working out in your favor, AKA just buying yourself some more time. Rolling options is extremely powerful and more beneficial to those who write options. So covered calls, poor man's covered calls, cash to curb puts or credit spreads, rolling options is a great way to keep those trades alive and continue to bring in premium or credit. We're going to dive deeper into this with this real example, and you're going to see the power of rolling options. Now, what you're looking at here is my trade history, and I just want to show you this just to show you that I'm actually doing this with Intel. You can see they have 49 orders, and a lot of them are collecting premiums off of this stock. I'm creating my own yield. I'm creating passive income off of my investment in Intel. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to roll covered calls or poor man's covered calls in Thinkorswim. And this concept is going to apply to whatever brokerage you're using. As you can see here, we already have a leaps in Intel. We have the January 2023 $35 call. The reason why we have that is because it's a 0.8 delta. When selling covered calls or poor man's covered calls, I should say, you want a leap that has at least a 0.8 delta because that means you're going to be able to capitalize on that upside. So it's very important to have a relatively high delta when selling poor man's covered calls. Outside of that, selling covered calls or poor man's covered calls, the actual selling of the covered call is the same process. And that's what we're going to focus on on today's video. So we're on the on-demand portion of Thinkorswim. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to take a look at the charts for Intel. And right now, the stock is trading at $47.39. And I like the $50 strike because that's here because that's at this resistance here. And also me personally, I was selling that $49 strike. So let's get into selling covered calls against Intel at the $49 strike every single week. So to get started, all you're going to do is hit trade. We are then going to take a look at the weeklies. So we're going to pick March 4th. We are then going to sell a single. We have five leaps, so we're going to sell five covered calls. And if we take a look at the bid versus the ask, we have a $31 and $32 spread. So $1 difference. And I'm going to get that towards the lower end because I just want this to get filled. So I'm going to pick $31 and I'm going to hit send. And as you can see, we sold five call options against my position in Intel for $31 per contract. If we go to the monitoring tab, you can see what we have. We are long these leaps and then we sold poor man's covered calls against them. 
and I actually ended up picking the wrong strike price. I did this real quickly. I wanted the $50 strike, but now we're doing the $48.50 strike. Doesn't matter. The process is the same, and we're going to roll these call options. So now we're going to fast forward to right before March 4th. So we're going to go to March 3rd, and I'm going to hit go, and I'm going to wait for this to download. All right, we're updated. Let's take a look at the stock price. It's $48.20, so not bad. These actual call options are really good. We're just a day out and we're just out of the money. So what we can do is we can extend this trade another week. So now that we have this position open, what we can do to roll them, and you can see right now that the bid is $35 and the ask is $36. So they're just a little bit more expensive. But I want to keep those premiums. I just want to roll this. Now to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the position. We're going to hit create rolling order. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pick the same strike price. And you can see that we're going to get a $51 credit or $49 credit. This is fluctuating. And we're going to hit confirm and we're going to hit send. And we're going to wait for that position to get filled. Now we got this order filled. We got it for $49 per contract. And now if we go to our monitoring tab, we, you can see that we have the next expiration, which is March 11th. So we no longer hold these call options. We bought them back and then we sold this and we collected that credit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the day before March 11th. We're going to go to March 10th and we're going to hit go and we're going to wait for this to load. Now I want you to keep in mind how much money we already collected. We collected $30 for the first week and then we rolled them and we collected another $50. So for every contract, we made 80 bucks thus far. So if we were to buy back this call option, if we bought it back for 80 bucks, we would be break even. But there's no reason to do that. We can continue to roll these options and continue to collect premium. So we're at March 10th. We're going to go to the chart and we can see that we are still out of the money, which is really good. So what we can do is we can roll it again. So we have that March 11th, let's roll that March 18th and let's just keep it at the same strike price. So we'll go back to that March 11th, we'll right click on our order, our position, we'll collect, we'll create a rolling order and we will collect, let's say another $30 per contract. And we're gonna hit send and we're gonna wait for this to get filled. It's not getting filled fast enough for me. So in Thinkorswim, we can go to our working orders. We can right click on it. We can cancel replace order. And let's just drop our credit down to $29 per contract, revise it, and now it got filled. So keep in mind, we sold them for $30 the first week, $50 the second week, and $29 the third week. So we made $109 per contract. We did that five times. We made $509 in three weeks off of five leaps for Intel. Let's take a look at our position here. And we are also positive on the leaps. So we've also collected an 11% gain, $620 on the position itself. So we're over $1,000 in gains in just three weeks off of Intel. Let's continue this process even more. Let's go to March 17th, which is a day before the next covered calls expire. So here we are, it's March 17th. These call options are still out of the money, really good news for us, and we can roll them again. So we're just going to continue this process until it eventually gets in the money. So we're going to create a rolling order. We're going to do the same process again. They're not very expensive right now. They're not, we're not getting much premium. We're going to get 15 cents or $16 per contract. So we're going to hit confirm and send, and we're going to wait for this to get filled. We're going to go to our monitor tab, see what it's doing. It's not getting filled. I'm going to just replace this to $15 per contract hit send, and now we got it filled. So I'm starting to lose track of how much money we've made off of these poor man's covered calls. I wanna show you how much yield you are creating by selling poor man's covered calls on this Intel position. So the first thing is we need to figure out how much money we put in the market to be able to do this strategy. And that's these leaps here. The trade price was $11.83 and we got five contracts. So it's 1183 times five. This is how much money it costs to get into this position. We're just going to call it 5,900. Next up, we need to figure out how much money we've collected in premiums over the last month. It was $109 plus 15. 
So $124, we're going to times that by 5, is 620. Then we're going to divide that by 5,900, and you can see that we've collected 10.5% in just premiums. You can also add the upside that we've gotten in the stock, which is $485. So 620 plus 485 divided by 5,900, our total returns in the last month for this position are is 18.7%. 18.7% gains in this position, and the stock is at $46, which is basically where it's been at over the last month. So as you can see, you're able to make money, create yield if the stock was to just stay flat. In all honesty, in a position like this, you want the stock to kind of stay flat. You don't want your covered calls to get in the money. But if they were to get in the money, it's not the worst thing either. And hopefully we can get an example where they actually end up in the money. So we have the March 25th calls that we sold. We're going to go to March 24th. And hopefully they end up in the money so I can finally show you what it's like selling covered calls when they are in the money. All right, so it's March 24th. The stock is currently trading at $49.88. These covered calls are finally in the money, which is something that you don't want to happen with covered calls, but it's not the end of the world. You can still make money. I'm going to show you how on this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our position. We're going to go to the trade tab and we have this March 25th option. We have them and you can see that they're in the money. So here we go. What can we do? What are our options here? The first option you have, which isn't what I would recommend, is you can close out your position at a loss. Keep in mind how much money we've collected over the last four months. It was $124 per contract. We can close out our position. It's going to cost us a little bit more than we made, but we also have to remember that we capitalize on that upside. If we take a look at our leaps, you can see that those leaps are up 31%, $1,835. So we're still capitalizing on the upside on our leaps, but we might have to close out of our poor man's covered call for a loss. But you don't have to do that. There's other things you can do, and I wouldn't recommend closing out of your position. Continue to collect premiums if you think the stock is going to rebound. Because what are stocks like? They're like rubber bands. They're going to shoot to the upside, but they're probably going to overshoot that you're going to see a pullback. Then they're going to shoot to the downside. They're probably going to overshoot and you're going to see a pullback just like a rubber band would. So what we can do instead, and we can get kind of flexible here and I'll show you some options, but we don't want to buy it back at a loss. We'll do another rolling order. And if we right click and we hit create rolling order, we can do what we've been doing this whole time and just keeping the same strike price, but extending the option out another week. And because we are in the money, there's going to be extrinsic value for next week's option. And you're going to actually collect a credit for doing this. So you're still going to make money. We can make $36 per contract. But maybe let's say you don't think it's going to go back down to $48.50. It's unrealistic or whatever the technicals are saying that that's probably not going to happen. So you have some flexibility. What you can do is you could sell the $48.50 strike. And then what you can do is you can buy back this $48.50 strike and sell a higher strike. You could sell it at the $50. Now here, you're de you're, now here, you're going to have to pay to do this position. You're going to have to pay $58. But keep in mind, you did make $124 off of the position. So this might put you in a better situation. And you might have to minimize your gains a little bit to put yourself in a better position if that's what you want to do. But you're not taking a loss. You're still making money and you're extending your strike price. So the odds of this ending up out of the money for next week just increased. But Intel isn't a very volatile stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it at the $48.50 strike and I'm going to sell these for a $37 credit per. And the order got filled and we're just going to go to the next week. So we're going to go to March 31st. We're going to hit goal. So here we are. The stock is at $50. So those call options are still in the money. So we're going to have to do this trade again to get out of the money or to hopefully get out of the money. Same situation happens here. You can buy them back. 
You can pick a different strike, but we're just going to continue to roll with this $48.50 strike. We're going to hit create rolling order, and as you can see, there's still a credit because the next week's option, I repeat, is going to have extrinsic value. So it's going to be valued at a higher price. So what we're doing is we're buying back the covered calls that we sold, and then we're selling a covered call that's further out in time, meaning there's more extrinsic value. So we're gonna confirm and we're going to hit send. And the money just keeps on pouring in. We just continue to do this. And now we're going to go as far as I can. We're going to go to April 5th, and we're gonna wait for it to load. Now the stock is at $48.75, so it's slightly in the money. Let's take a look at the charts. Let's take a look at the chain. So the chain right now, this is at $60. Um, what we can do is we can roll it again. We can wait, maybe this is going to end up under $48.50 by the end of the week. We can continue to roll them, or we can finally close out the position. If I was to close out of this position right now, all I would have to do is buy back these covered calls. And considering how much premiums we've collected, I don't even know where we're at right now, but we're probably close to $200 in premiums. We can buy them back for $65. And to do that, you're just going to hit close. You're going to hit create closing order and you're going to hit and then you're just going to buy them back. You're going to hit send. Now after that's all said and done, we still hold our leaps so we can continue to sell poor man's covered calls. Maybe we just take a break from doing this and we pick a different strike price, but I just wanna show you the process. We still own these leaps. They're up 22, they're up 23.2%, so a positive gain of $1,372. Now if we take a look at the trade history for Intel, and how much money we've actually made by selling poor man's covered calls. I'm going to exclude the amount of money that we've collected in our leaps, which I just showed you. I just wanna talk about the premiums. So to get started, we sold our first poor man's covered call and we collected $31 per contract. Then we rolled them and we collected $49 per contract. Then we rolled them again, we collected $29 per contract. Then we rolled them again, we collected $15 per contract. We rolled them again, we collected $37 per contract. And we rolled them again and we collected $23 per contract. We collected $184 per contract and then we ended up buying out or closing out our position and we had to pay $66 wasn't needed. We didn't need to do it. We could have continued to roll them and wait for the stock to get below $48.50, where then the contract would expire worthless and we can reset. But I just want to show you the process. So we had to buy that back. So this is negative. It's a debit of $66. So we made $118 in premiums. And this is over one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. And we did this with five contracts. So $118 times five is 590. And our entry price to get into this option strain strategy was 5,900. So we collected 10% over the last six weeks, 10% in just a month and a half's time. And we didn't even have to do this $66 in debit that's cutting into our gains, but even so still 10% gains. And we also keep the gains on the leaps, which is 23%. So all in all, this is a money-making machine. You can continue to do this process over and over and create passive income off of your investment. Now that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I thank you so much for your time. If you like this video, then definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell. Check out the playlist that we have on this channel. We have options trading for beginners. We have Robinhood investing for beginners, Webull investing for beginners, stock market investing for beginners. We're adding videos to all of those playlists constantly. I'm trying to create a channel that's going to provide you with a ton of resources to make you a better trader and or investor. That's the goal here. Another very beneficial resource that I am offering to you guys is if you join the Patreon, you are going to get access to a private Discord server. It is on this Discord server where I will notify you all of my trades. Other members will also notify you of their trades. And it is the best way to contact me or other investors if you have any questions. If you're not sure about an options trade or you just want a opinions on a trade, then that is the place to ask the question. You get access to that private Discord server by joining the Patreon. It's $5 a month. But outside of that, I'll catch you on the next video. 
It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And this is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible. See ya.